Junior 8 and welcome to your virtual coastal field work trip. Myself and Mr Dudley are going to be taking you on a virtual trip around the Fannet coastline so we can begin to look at some of the coastal processes and landforms of which you would have learnt at in school but we're going to bring the beach to you today. So we're going to be starting off our journey here in Botany Bay looking at the erosional processes and the landforms that they have created, some of which are behind us here. We're then going to be moving around the coast towards Dumpton Gap where we begin to look at coastal management, what is there, why is it there and the reasons for all that. Before we finish off in Ramsgate where we look at our depositional processes and some of the landforms such as the spit are created there. Thank you Mr Toffin and for those of you lucky enough to live near some of these locations you visited, please feel free to come down and collect feel good yourself. If not, fear not, we have all the information we provided with you. We'll also be given out a PDF document detailing everything you need to know for this. Okay then year eight. So one of the first tasks myself and Mr Dudley would like you to do is to start to take photographs or if not use Google Images if you can't make it down here. Take photographs of some of the, um, the land or the landscape around you. So you may want to start off with these wonderful stacks behind us here. You may want to take photos of some of the cliffs uh, to my left. Uh, panning around there is a good example of a cave that's formed over there. Uh, the wider beach is obviously Botany Bay, so you've got your headlands and bay there with a smaller headland sticking out just in front there. Panning around towards the sea, we've got what we call a wave cut platform. So this is where a cliff once stood many years ago. So once you've taken some of those photographs, you could label them, you could annotate them, you could um, start to make comparisons with other cliffs and beaches. The second task we'd like you to do is our famous one, or, or rather our favourite one, is a geographical film a sketch. So what we would like you to sketch is this area here. The headland with the stack, the wave cut notch at the bottom there, and if you can, try to include the wave cut platform. Now if you do come down here, do be wary of the tides. The tide comes right up to the base of this cliff here and can cut you off in the other bay. So do make sure you check those tides times before you make your trip down here. Okay, so when we do a geographical fieldwork sketch, we need to make sure we're including some of the key information about it. So what actually is it you're sketching? Can you give it a suitable title? You also need to tell us what time of day you're sketching it because that could affect uh, your sketch to someone else's. What direction are you facing? So possibly uh, bring a compass with you or certainly use a compass on your phone. Um, what's the weather like as well? Is it, is it sunny? Is it cloudy? Is it foggy? Is it rainy? All of those aspects could affect your sketch. I'm standing here next to Botany Bay's very own two stacks behind me here. What I'm going to quickly do is go through the processes of how these stacks and stacks were created. So thousands of years ago, this would have all been connected as one large headland and the waves and its energy and the sediment hurled against it by hydraulic action, abrasion and solution, they would have eroded against this cliff here. This would have then led to the formation of something called a cave. Okay, so the cave is an eroded part of a crack or a fault within this cliff system here. So we've got a good example of a small one over here. And then just behind me, we have quite a large cave where the roof has started to collapse over here. So coming back to these stacks over here. So what would have happened then? Over hundreds of years of erosion, this cave would have punched its way through all the way through this headland here. So you could walk like a tunnel from this bay through the arch to the other side of that bay over there. Now we're going to see a good example of an arch later on as we travel around to Dumpton. We'll stop off quickly at Kingsgate Bay looking at the arch there by the Captain Digby. Now as that arch got bigger and bigger and it got taller and taller, the bridge between the, the uh, cliff material here and the mainland here would have got weaker and would have eventually collapsed. So as that material collapsed, it would have then left these two large masses of chalk here unattached from the mainland and we know them as stacks. I will tell you some jokes here about cliffs. I've got a stack of them. These stacks, dun, dun, these stacks eventually will become eroded and worn down through erosion and weathering and we will be left with something called a stump. Good example of one over there. And as that stump is finally worn down the way, it becomes part of the wave cut platform. So this is the algae covered, seaweed covered uh, 
uh, material that you can see out here, which suggests that once upon a time, this is where chalk cliffs Okay, so here we have another landform that I'll just quickly go through with you in terms of that how the landform is created. So this is known as what we call a wave cut notch. It is an undercutting at the base of the cliff caused by wave action and erosion. So the waves will be pounding at the base of this cliff here, chipping away like an axe at the bottom of a tree trunk. And it will slowly remove some of this material and it means that all of this material above will become unstable. Okay, so you imagine that slowly on all angles of this stack, the waves are pounding away at it, eroding that material, and this stack eventually is going to become unstable and might fall down. Okay, then, anyway, so some of you are probably wondering what is the cause of the colour change from this material here and this material down here. So we obviously have uh, a bright white colour chalk here, dull, mossy green colour chalk here. This is as, as a result of the high tide. So we're not actually at one of our specific locations for your coast field work, but it would be criminal to not stop here at our very own archway just behind me. Now this is an erosional landform caused by abrasion and attrition, corrosion and solution, all wearing down that chalk cliff. So originally you would have started with your cave, that cave would have gone all the way through your headland and formed our very own arch. Eventually that arch will become very narrow at the top and collapse and you'll be left with a stack. Uh, and then once that stack has been eroded and it's worn down to a lower level, you're then left with your stump. Welcome then year eight to location two of your coast's fieldwork. We've arrived here at Dumpton Gap where we're going to be starting to look at the coastal management strategies put in place to protect some of the properties behind Mr Dudley. So when we go down to Dumpton Gap, we're going to be noticing that some stretch of Dumpton is protected and some isn't. And we're going to start to look at why some of the sections of this bay are managed and why some of them are not. So looking over here then, we can see some properties that look very, very expensive. In fact, some of them are certainly in the high sort of six figure value. So that is one of the main reasons why some of the stretch of Dumpton Gap is protected. Now, just beyond uh, my right hand shoulder over here, where you can see down the section of the cliff that is unmanaged, this is because some of the land behind it isn't that high in value. Okay, so when councils and governments make decisions of what sections of coast to manage, they do something called a cost benefit analysis or CBA. This is where they weigh up the costs of the process of managing that coastline and the benefits of managing that coastline. If the costs outweigh the benefits, then that management strategy will not go ahead. If the benefits outweigh the costs, so it is cost effective, then they will go ahead and they will manage that stretch of coastline. Now you can look at two different types of management. You have hard and soft engineering. Hard is where you work against nature. It's typically very expensive and you're going to be using unnatural materials. Whereas soft tends to use natural materials, works with nature, and is typically uh, the cheaper option. However, hard engineering, as you would expect, lasts longer and soft engineering does not last as long. In a minute, we're gonna be working our way back down into the, day, uh, to the bay, where we're going to be able to look at these coastal management strategies in greater detail. Okay, welcome then, year eight, to our second location. We're now actually down in Dumpton Gap, down on the beach itself. So one of the things I, me and Mr. Dudley are gonna ask you to do is to take a photograph of the cliffs themselves. 
could do this in one of three places. You can take a photo of the cliff over there, the beach huts and the management strategy over there. You can take a photo of the cliff to my right, which is uh, still managed, has some vegetation on it. Or you can take a photo of the cliff far in the distance over there, which is the unmanaged section. Okay? Now, when you take a photo of these areas, I'm also going to ask you to have a look at some of the coastal management strategies. this area of the bay is managed and why do you think the area behind Mr Dudley is unmanaged? Okay, so think about what I mentioned about the, the value of properties and land on the top of the cliff. Okay, so one of the things that we said was what we're going to do is to compare and contrast the two different types of cliff and how they get So over onto my right hand side we have the unmanaged section. So I'd like you to start to look at factors like percentage of face uh, of the cliff covered by vegetation. What sort of beach material do you have in front of it? Uh, is there evidence of a beach and is there any evidence of a wave cut platform? Okay. So panning around the to the left hand side, you can see this cliff here is a lot different in obviously the vegetation cover and also the angle of it. If it was another down to the beach, you can also see a big difference in the material that's in front of this cliff size, uh, the rock type, and obviously this uh, wind. Well, as the tide continues to go out, you can also start to see the evidence of the wind. So when you compare the contrast between the beach, the material, the shape, the size, and vegetation cover of those cliffs. So we are now at our third location for your coasts field work. We are at Ramsgate East Cliff, uh, just above Ramsgate Main Sands down here. Now, just behind me is Ramsgate's own spit. Now, this is a landform caused by depositional processes. So where sediment coming from uh, the direction over my right hand side is bringing material over and is depositing, depositing it just over there behind me. So one of the data collection methods that we're going to be doing today is a field sketch. So we're going to hand you a photo of the landform behind me and we're going to pretend that you're here so you can do all of the necessary labelling and annotations for me. Okay? So some of the other things we're going to be asking you to do as well is you're going to be given an OS map just like this and we're going to ask you to label onto this map where you think the spit is. So a little bit of GIS there as well. And finally, we're going to be asking you to think about why you think that spit is developing there and add on to your OS map what direction do you think this spit is growing in. Now we can't see it too in great detail due to the tide coming in, but if you look just beyond the red and white pole there, that is the base of the spit and the spit is growing in this direction over here towards Ramsgate Main Sands. 